Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to learn how to make this. We're going to focus on composition in modeling some really simple shapes, as well as shaders, materials, and lighting. We will leverage pre-made color palettes in order to elevate our visual design and visual system. So that being out of the way, let's do it. Let's do a quick breakdown of the original image I made. As you can tell, the shapes are pretty simple. You will find some capsule, some half sphere, some sphere and something I model very quickly. There's a background that I will teach you how to do. And I'm using a very simple three points light system. Let's start by modeling very simple shapes. In order to accelerate our workflow, I will suggest you to enable two very interesting add-ons. Go to edit, preference, add-ons. In the search, look for extra and enable add curve extra object and add mesh extra object. I'm going to start by creating a simple sphere. Can't go wrong with that. I'm going to move it out of the way. I'm going to create a capsule. And so we're going to leverage the add-on we just installed. We're going to click Shift A, Mesh and Round Cube. If you click here, you will have more parameters available. And we're going to select Capsule. Looking good. Let's move that out of the way. Another very easy setup and things we can do is using Boolean. To make it simple, Boolean is a mathematical operation that you can apply between two shapes. Visuals are louder than words. So let's uh, take a look. I'm going to create a first sphere. I'm going to duplicate that sphere using Shift D. I'm going to scale it up using S. I'm going to select my first sphere. I'm going to go to modifiers and I'm going to add a Boolean. I'm going to select my second sphere and I'm going to hide the second sphere. And now you can understand what Boolean means. I'm going to use difference for this. I'm going to move this out of the way and we will tweak and reuse that a little bit later. For the next shape, we're going to use curves. For those who are familiar with uh, vector 2D graphic editors such as Illustrator, a curve is basically a path. You can use BZ a curve or other algorithm to generate those paths. I'm going to click Shift A and this time instead of mesh, I'm going to go in the curve menu. I'm going to go on curve spiral and I'm going to click on spheric. So I can play with the resolution here a little bit. Right now it's just vertices, but let's create some geometry. I'm going to click on object data properties here. I'm going to go into the geometry menu and in the bevel, I'm going to increase that number. I can even add some caps. Let's put this one out of the way. For our last shape, uh, let's have some fun. Shift A, mesh and math function, Z math surface. Looks complicated, but what we want is only sin function. but I kind of want to use that as a curtain. So I'm going to rotate that and I'm going to scale on Z. So S and Z. Brilliant. Now that I have all my shapes, the next step is going to be tweaking the camera. As I mentioned in previous tutorial, I like my lens to be quite big, uh, close to a telephoto. So let's go with 120. One thing I'm missing is the backdrop, so let's model that real quick. Shift A, Mesh, Plane, S, 10, Tab. I'm going to select those two vertices. Side view, Extrude, Z. Good. Apply Scale. Go back to Edit Mode, 2 to use Edge Mode. Select this edge, Control B to Bevel, Add Segments. Exit Mode, Shit Auto Smooth. And now we have our backdrop. Now that the camera is set up, the next big step is going to be moving the elements around to create a nice visual rhythm, finding balance between curves and edges and the different weight of the elements. You can follow along and try to mimic what I'm doing or let your creativity shine. I'm going to speed up the process because it's going to be a little bit time consuming and I don't want that part to be too much boring. I think that's pretty good for now. I'm quite happy with that. 
layout. Right now, I'm using the default HDRI included within Blender, but I want to use my three-point line system to have more control. I'm going to go to the submenu, enable the scene world, shader editor, world, and I'm going to turn that black. We'll dive a little bit later within the HDRI nodes and the world lighting. Let's go back to 3D viewport, shift A, and let's add a area light. For the lights, I already mentioned that, but I love the shape to be ellipse as I feel like it's more pleasing to the eye. I'm going to place my first key light with you and then I'll speed up the process to add my fill light and my rim light. G and Z to move on the Z axis. By default it is a little bit too small so I'm going to do that 10 meters but I need more power too so I'm going to increase that to 2k and now I'm going to move my light. I got the dramatic shadows that I'm going to fill select shift D Pretty happy with that right now we can tweak later on let's clean a little bit the hierarchy click and shift click to select the three of them m to had to, to move to a new collection the next step is going to be the shaders and the materials using different colors we're going to leverage pre-made color palettes that have been thoughtfully crafted type color palette in google and you will have a million website that you can get inspired from i'm going to click on the first link and i'm going to click explore trending palettes the really good thing with that is that has been crafted with taste and this color will work together i like my color palette to have some contrast since the original had some greens we can try to leverage this one so what I will do is click on the dot dot dot, export palette, and I will save as an image. In this window, I will switch to image editor, and I will drag and drop the image in here. Mouse will scroll to zoom out. I'm going to select shapes one by one, adding a new material, and using the high dropper to select the color. I like to start with the backdrop, so I'm going to click on material properties, new, base color, high drop, and I'm going to click this color. I'm going to click on the capsule, same deal, eyedropper, and I'm going to select the color, sphere, another color. The colors are pretty muted, so there's a few tricks we can do to change that. But before, I would like to add some glass material, new material, transmission to one. Let's bring up the shader editor. In order to change the saturation, the easiest way is to click on base color and increase saturation. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other color. There's a few things here I really don't like. Those two panels do not really work together. The camera is too far away from the main element, leaving too much space on the top and at the bottom. The spline is a little bit too small. I don't really like that pull-in, so I'm going to redo that again. So I'm going to speed up the video and see you after I'm done with that. That's where I ended up with this specific color palette. For example, I've downloaded a few of them and here are the results. Explore as much as possible and try to iterate. It's really hard to find the perfect shot and the perfect combo the first time. This is it for this tutorial, but what I would like you to try is experiment with different color palettes, different shapes, different composition. It is a very simple setup, but this allows you to play and iterate with shapes, materials, and lights. And by introducing those pre-made color palettes, this will remove the guesswork out of the way. Those are very simple materials and we will learn how to make them a little bit more complex in the upcoming videos. Feel free to drop a comment, like, and subscribe to the channel so you will get the latest updates about the upcoming videos. See ya!